All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about this upcoming Arctic blast that's actually gonna make its way into the Northeastern United States. I know we just switched over to a warmer pattern, but that is gonna briefly come to a very, very sharp end, and also some snowfalls possible as well, believe it or not. So we're gonna be talking about all of those things within this video. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will have above average temperatures in May or below average temperatures in May? Let me know in the comments down below and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and I really quickly want to go over the storm reports from yesterday because we did have an enhanced risk. We had 93 reports of hail, 53 reports of wind, uh, damaging wind that is, and then 5 reports of tornadoes across, let's see, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and then also Illinois. So multiple states saw tornadoes yesterday, a very interesting tornado day. Now let's get into what this video is actually about, and that's going to be the temperature pattern. So the previous 14 days before April 24th, uh, look at the temperature pattern. Extreme cold air over especially the central United States, but even most of the eastern United States with some warmth over the western United States. Now, the previous three days have gone like this. Very warm for the central and the eastern United States with very cold for the western United States. We saw a massive flip up. Uh, and actually, throughout the day today, April 29th, throughout the entire day today, we do expect the warm pattern to continue for the eastern United States. But look at the west coast. We do have those warmer than normal conditions out west, and that is going to encourage cold further east than that. So we will see this cold pattern move its way in. Now, speaking of today... We actually do have a general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green, a marginal risk there in the darker green, and then a slight risk of severe weather again for all of those yellow regions, and that's spanning across many, many states today, especially the northeast as well, which is very interesting. Uh, talking about those individual outlooks, we have a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there in the green, and then a 15% chance of damaging wind within the yellow the hail report, we don't have a lot of hail risk today, only a 5% chance there uh, for the deep south. And then same story for the tornado uh, risk here. We have just the deep south included there, and that's a 2% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location. I just briefly wanted to go over that severe weather real quick. As we move towards tomorrow, April 30th, you can see, again, some warm air is still around, but that warm out west is really building in. And we do see some colder air moving into the eastern United States a little bit there. Very, very interesting. Now, by the time we take a look at May 1st, this Arctic blast makes its way into the northeastern United States there, impacting states like Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, all of New England, uh, even reaching the eastern seaboard. So this is going to be a pretty potent Arctic blast actually as well. Those greens indicating 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Uh, and again, like I said, in between Friday and Saturday, snowfall will be possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to continue on with this temperature pattern. And we're actually going to look at that snowfall threat as well. All of those things are coming up in just a moment. Now, by the time we're taking a look at May 2nd, you can see the warm temperatures actually return for the eastern United States. So just as quickly as it enters into the eastern United States, it is going to exit out. And look out west, we see some colder air trying to battle its way in. That is that PNA trying to go back to a negative phase, which would again encourage warmer air out east. So this PNA is driving the pattern right now, and it's really going back and forth, and that's why we're seeing the temperatures in the eastern United States go back and forth as well. All right, let's take a look at a zoomed-in look at the northeast, because I really, really, really want to talk about here. Uh, I want to talk about the temperature pattern in that snowfall event potential for the northeastern United States here. Uh, so first things first, at about 2 a.m. on Friday, we have temperatures that are 5 to 10 degrees above normal for most of the northeastern United States. Even down in Virginia and North Carolina, we have 15 to 20 to even more degrees above normal. So very warm air is in the area. Uh, but then just a few hours later at about 2 p.m. on Friday, so later in that day, we can see that 10 to 15 to even 20 degrees below normal temperatures enter into the, to the interior <laughs> eastern United States, and this is what's going to allow for that snowfall to be possible. And as you can see, as we head towards the overnight hours uh, of Friday into Saturday, you can see it just gets even colder here as we see those temperatures that are, again, uh, 10 to 15 degrees below normal, but it's becoming more widespread by this point. Uh, even some of those areas that we're seeing 20 degrees above normal are now seeing temperatures that are below normal by this point. So a very, very, very potent 
flip in that pattern, uh, very abrupt, and I can already feel my headaches coming uh, just because I get headaches with these huge changes. Let me know in the comments if you guys get those, those very bad sinus headaches from these huge changes in the temperature and pressure patterns. I absolutely hate it. It's always these transition months in the spring and in the fall where it's absolutely the worst when we see cool down and then warm up and then cool down. Uh, my head is just pounding for months, uh, typically, uh, this time of year. I hate it, uh, but, you know, it's exciting as we're approaching summer. We had very hot days here in, uh, in Virginia, by the way. Got to go to the beach yesterday. It was a very hot day. Or, sorry, it was Tuesday, actually. It was very, very hot. Almost got a sunburn, uh, but it's been very nice. Let me know what the temperatures got up to in your area over this warm-up. Uh, I'd be curious to see if you guys got up to some warmer temperatures like my area did. Uh, it was very exciting to see kind of a summer-like summer -like pattern show up. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the simulated radar and watch this snow come into the eastern United States. Very, very rare and interesting event. All right, now here we are taking a look at the simulated radar by about... I would call it about 11 a.m. here on Friday, April 30th, and as you can see, just a bunch of rain around, but we can see that colder air making its way in, and by the time we take a look at approximately 11 p.m. there on Friday, take a look at that moderate to heavy snowfall for New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire. You can tell this is definitely an elevation-based event. That's no surprise, though, this time of year. Elevation is kind of crucial to get snowfall. Obviously, it's very rare. So we're taking a look at Adirondacks, the Green Mountains, and then the White Mountains pretty exclusively here. But by the time we're reaching about 5 a.m., you can see some snowfall reaches as far south as Pennsylvania, and then even Massachusetts in those hillier regions, and even Connecticut as well, widespread throughout Vermont and New Hampshire. Many folks are going to see flakes if they stay up for it, and some folks may even see some uh, snowfall before they go to bed. Uh, Friday night. So very, very interesting uh, pattern we're going to find ourselves in. And I think the, the reason I really wanted to show this, because obviously it's not that major of a snowfall event, but I wanted to show you guys this just so you can tell how major this cool down is going to be. Uh, we're going to see snow. So obviously that, that says a lot about how cold it could potentially get uh, with this upcoming pattern. Let's just take a look at the total snowfall quickly. I know it's not going to be not all of this is going to stick, but I do think that there is some chance for a little bit of accumulation there for the Adirondacks, potentially the northern uh, Green Mountains there, and then the White Mountains of New Hampshire, potentially an inch or two for those blue regions. Uh, the gray regions, probably a dusting, if anything, on some grassy, grassy surfaces, potentially, especially in higher elevations. You could see uh, maybe a half an inch of snowfall, you know, very spotty, very dusting-like. Uh, accumulation in those darker grays, but it's mostly the blues where there is a chance of a dusting to maybe an inch or so uh, in those blues, but still nevertheless a very interesting situation we find ourselves in. Let's just continue on with that temperature pattern. This is for the third uh, of May here, and as you can see those warm temperatures again have returned for the eastern United States. We see a very, very warm pattern set in, uh, but by the time we're taking a look about the fifth of May, take a look at that. Some colder air is making its way back in to the eastern United States, and some warmer air is returning for the western United States. So again, a classic positive PNA pattern uh, tries to take hold once again uh, for the United States here. Isn't it interesting how something so far like California, Oregon, Washington, the temperature pattern out there can affect the temperature so drastically all the way uh, on the east coast? It's always amazed me how that works. By the time we're taking a look at it, Friday, May 7th, you can see that we do get a little bit of a negative PNA now taking place. So that colder air is returning for the western United States. The warmer air is transitioning further east. We do still see a potent Arctic blast for the eastern United States again. But take this one with a grain of salt because it is a little bit further out in that temperature pattern. So we're not going to be super confident in that long range stuff. Here is that PNA pattern, the Pacific North American Oscillation. Again, once this goes positive, that's those warmer temperatures along the West Coast. And when it goes negative, that's that colder temperatures along the West Coast. So you can see we're positive uh, until about the 2nd, and then we go negative until about the 6th, and then we go positive until about the 8th, and then we go negative until about the 10th, and maybe even go positive again. So this is just all over the place here, as you can see from this chart, and that is going to drive the temperature pattern out east. When it's negative, that means warmer temperatures in the east. When it's positive, that means colder temperatures in the east. So you can tell we're definitely going to go back and forth for the first two weeks of May or so and the last few days of April here. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we are at a 5 out of 6. We've finally broken that streak of 6 out of 6. 
We've talked about some things that are five days plus out, which is going to lead me to not be perfectly confident, but still very confident in this upcoming pattern. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next chance at severe weather is? And James Marr said, I think sometime mid next week, we will see our next chance at severe weather. Uh, there is a day four and a day five risk. So we're going to need to talk about that over the coming days as that's going to be our next severe weather event. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Balamo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Ada Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Flagos, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you'd like to be part of this exciting patron highlight of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, our weather top dog, Hair Farms One, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. You can join this by hitting that subscribe button, or sorry, hitting. you can hit the subscribe button. I would love that as well, but if you hit that button next to the subscribe button, that's how you can join this. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to comment for the YouTube algorithm as well, and be sure to subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.